So in the last video, we talked about the concentration curve and graphing industry concentration, starting with the largest firm's market share and then adding it all up until it gets to 100. And we saw that firms with a higher concentration curve are, um, or industries, excuse me, have, are more concentrated. But often what we'll want is a number, um, whether we're doing econometric analysis or we just want to compare industries um, more easily uh, with a single number. And so one uh, number that is commonly used is the concentration ratio, and it will include a number of uh, the top firms, right? So it could be, we'll call it CR4 if we're looking at the four largest firms, CR10 if we're looking at the 10 largest firms, and all you have to do is add up the market share of those firms. Um, so uh, the equation is here, you know, MS is just the market share and you start from, you know, the biggest firm and then you go to the Kth largest, right? Whether that K is two, three, four, ten, whatever. Um, and so this is a nice easy number uh, to calculate. It's easy to understand um, and it makes a lot of sense. So if we go back to our um, imaginary industries, A, B, and C, we can see that they provide a CR4 number here, right? So that's going to be the market share, uh, the combined market share of the four largest firms. And so in industry A, that's going to be 40 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 or 80. You can see that down here. Uh, for industry B, it's 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. Uh, so that's also 80. And then for industry C, it's 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 or 40. And so that's our CR4 there. So, you know, that's a good number. Um, it's easy to understand. It's easy to calculate. Uh, it might not be the best number, right? It provides no information about shares outside of the largest K firms. Um, it ignores the distribution. So, um, for example, industry A and industry B have the same CR4. They're both uh, 80. But industry A has one um, really large firm at 40%, and industry B has four... Um, similarly sized firms, each with 20% market share. Um, and so industry A would actually be more concentrated if we looked at any other concentration ratio besides CR4. Um, CR1, 2, 3, 5, 6, or 7, right? Obviously, once we get to 8, we're at 100% for both. So maybe we can do something better. And so the herfindahl hirschman Index, or HHI, um, is one way to do that. And basically what it does is it squares the market share um, of each firm and then adds it up. And so, you know, for a monopoly, right, the market share is one or a hundred. And so that's going to be the highest number that the herfindahl hirschman index can get. You know, one squared is one, or sometimes we'll do it in percentage points. And so a hundred squared is 10,000. Um, for perfect competition, each, you know, market share is going to be really, really small and you square it and then it gets even smaller. You add those up, it's going to be really close to zero for a competitive market. Um, in our case, right, we can see if we go back, you know, the, the HHI equals 2,400 for industry A, 1,700 for industry B, and 1,000 for industry C. Um, and this is actually something that's used by the Department of Justice, right, starting in 1982 to evaluate um, antitrust violations and also to think about, you know, whether or not mergers between large firms should be allowed. Um, so if we go back here, we can see the HHI. And, you know, sometimes it will be measured between 0 and 1, as it is in this um, next to last row. And sometimes it will be measured 0 to 10,000, as it is in this middle row. Um, they're telling you the same information, right? Uh, it's just whether or not we're dealing with percentage points um, or decimal points. So one question is obviously, well, how much concentration is too much, right? Um, we, we know we don't have perfect competition in most markets, but should we allow, you know, CR4 to be, you know, 10%, 40%, 80%? Um, so some people have said that CR4 at 40% is where strategic interaction becomes significant. Um, and once it becomes 60%, Shepard says, okay, that's a tight oligopoly. And one where collusion is likely, right? So collusion, uh, as we'll talk about more in uh, Chapter 9, is really where firms get together to try to raise prices, um, which hurts consumers. For the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission, an industry is classified as unconcentrated when HHI is less than 1,000, 
All right, so remember industry C was right at 1,000. Uh, an industry is classified as moderately concentrated when it's between 1,000 and 1,800. So uh, industry B was at 1,700. Uh, an industry is classified as highly concentrated when the HHI is greater than or equal to 1,800. Uh, so industry A was at 2,400. So that would be highly concentrated. Now, the problem with any of these definitions is that we have to think about how we define the market. Right, And so we have to think about all products that are close substitutes, either in consumption, if we're talking about consumer markets or production, uh, when we're thinking about the firm side. And geographically, we have to think about, okay, well, what's the market, right? Is the market, you know, just, you know, the Providence area? Is the market New England? Is the market the United States? Is the market the world, right? And so if you think about like cement is heavy, um, and so markets tend to be local. You don't generally ship cement more than 150 miles, whereas diamonds are shipped worldwide. Um, and as we'll see uh, later, you know, diamonds are, are one of the most successful cartels um, in, in the world. Um, and then some markets can expand geographically, right? And so certainly what a lot of what's been going on since the 1970s is the expansion of markets from uh, regional or national markets to global markets. And so if you think about cars, um, as we saw in the last video, you know, GM, Ford, and Chrysler were basically competing with each other in the 1950s. Now they're competing with, you know, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Toyota, Honda, Hyundai, all these global um, companies. And so it's a much larger market. It's a really global market. So obviously we have a way to think about which products are substitutes that we've already learned, right? That's the cross price elasticity of demand. And so remember, that's just the percent change in the demand for one good, right? Uh, good I uh, divided by the percent change in the price of good J. And so when it's large and positive, products I and J are considered close substitutes. So that, you know, when the price of good J goes up, uh, people buy more of good eye because they're like, oh, I'm not buying good J, I want to buy good eye. Um, and so we would expect, you know, things like Coke and Pepsi to have a sizable cross price elasticity, but then it can be a little bit more complicated, right? Are Coke and Mountain Dew substitutes? Maybe. What about Coke and orange juice, right? Coke and water? Um, that's a little bit less clear. And so defining the market uh, is, is very important when we're thinking about these questions. So according to the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission, uh, a product's competitors include either all products to which buyers would switch if a firm raised the price of its product by 5%, and the products of all potential competitors that would be expected to enter the market within one year if all existing firms raise their prices by 5%. So... <laughs> That's a little bit complicated, right? Because now we have not only existing firms that uh, consumers could switch to, but potential firms that might um, come into the market if firms try to raise their prices. Um, and so, but it is important to think about this potential competition, and we're going to talk about that more later in the chapter. So. We want to think about, we can also think about sort of aggregate concentration, which is like the market share of total U.S. sales that are produced by the largest corporations. Um, I think there's some feeling that, you know, firms are getting bigger and bigger. Um, but one of the interesting things is that aggregate concentration has actually uh, not increased by uh, that much. Um, and so if we just look at this table, you can see, you know, if we take the total sales of the top 50, 100 or 200 manufacturing firms, right? So this is manufacturing. It's not going to include, you know, retail sales with, you know, Walmart and Target and Costco. Uh, but they and manufacturing firms have stayed fairly constant, you know, in the mid 20s for CR50, the low 30s uh, for CR100, um, and uh, the low 40s for CR200. And of course, one of the things that has gone on since 1997. Um, has been the movement of manufacturing away from the United States and towards places like China. And so that's a big difference as well. 